morning. Um, it's another chilly day here in Leo. Um, I was actually just on my way to go get tea and waffles at Mert. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but we'll go with it. Um, it's like M-E-E-R-T. It's a tea room here in Lille that was one of Charles de Gaulle's favorites. Um, so my friend Aaron told me to go try their waffles, which are kind of like street waffle like cookies. Uh <laughs> So we're gonna try both. Um, the vanilla was a favorite of Charles de Gaulle, who was born at Lille. So he's kind of like the most famous person to come out of Lille. Um, you can actually, I think, still go see his like childhood home. I don't know that I'm gonna have enough time to do it, but if you're here and you wanna do it, you can. Um, but if you wanna try one of his favorite like tea rooms, favorite snacks, go to Mert. Um, they're still around. Uh, so let's see if it lives up to the hype. I'm definitely like very into the packaging though, like how cute is this? I wasn't expecting them to give me something like so cute considering I barely bought anything, but let's see. This is the vanilla. As you can see, it's just kind of like a very long street waffle. It's really nice. The vanilla is like super fresh. Um, it's not as crispy as I thought it was going to be. It's actually kind of like a softer waffle. I'm not mad about it, but I feel like I'd like it better if I had like gotten tea or something to go with it. Um, you can go in and sit down and like have lunch or you know just tea or whatever, but because I'm in a hurry. I got them to go. Um, let's see, this is the vanilla pecan. Looks exactly the same, which is why they labeled the bags. Oh. I don't get any gold on them. Let me try again. You know, I don't normally love pecan, but this is actually really good. It was a good suggestion. Um, but I think I like the vanilla more. So I'm gonna eat that one first. Since I've started recording things for YouTube, I've definitely 
started to get more comfortable with basically being uncomfortable because it's awkward to walk around talking to your phone all the time especially when you don't know where you're going and you're in like a different city or like you know speaking a different language people tend to give you weird looks i've had people laugh at me so i'm doing the best i can um sorry the tasting wasn't in a prettier location but i got my big pastries because they're only open like during weird hours and then realized the museum probably isn't gonna let me take the food in. So I needed to eat it. Wanted to at least try them on camera to give you guys an opinion. So my little sidewalk setup is what had to do. And now I think it's gonna rain. So I'm gonna just try to get to this museum before it's pours. So the good news is it's still not raining. Um, I just finished walking around the Palais de Beaux Arts, the Fine Arts Museum here in Lille. It was really interesting. Um, I guess about like four, four and a half hours in there. Um, fair warning though, if you don't speak any French or read any French, you're gonna have a hard time with probably like 80% of the paintings and things in there because there's no translation. Thankfully, when I took French in high school, for some reason we learned how to like read it better than speak it. So I did okay and anything I couldn't figure out I just kind of made up and I feel like that's half the fun with art. You kind of make up your own story anyway. Um, so yeah, um, I mean there were some things like the special exhibits and a lot of like the religious stuff like kind of on like the like bottom level did have like more like more or less English translations on like bits and pieces so that was helpful um but overall i would highly recommend it it's definitely a very large museum i think like two and a half hours in i kind of thought i was done and then i realized there was a whole bottle of floor um so it's been a long day i just had a double espresso i'm debating trying to quickly go like a mile to charles de gaulle's house just to see it uh, they close in like an hour, so I don't know if they're gonna let me in. It's apparently free admission, but I feel like at the very least we'll see the outside of it. Say we kind of saw it. Um, yeah, there's the museum. Definitely a must while you're here in Lille, especially if you like museums. Um, if you're not really that into museums and you just kind of like go quickly through them, I feel like you could probably see most of that in like, I don't know, like 90 minutes, but if you like to take your time, like give yourself at least three hours, if not like four or five, depending on how much French you can read. Uh, but yeah, it's really cold, so I'm gonna start walking. Okay, so now that I know what direction I'm walking, I'm gonna keep talking about the museum a little bit longer. Um, if you're here, I think like the next couple months, they do have an exhibit 
on like the main floor that everybody's waiting in line for. I think I waited in line like a half hour. I wasn't sure what it was. It just had something to do with like touch. So I get up to the front and realize like the whole premise of this like little exhibit is that you get blindfolded and then your friend is supposed to like help you around the museum to experience like you know this like little section of the museum is like a blind person basically because the guy was telling me in museums i'm assuming just in france because i've never heard of this before that if you're blind you're allowed to touch everything including like all of the really old stuff which i'm definitely questioning because it just to me i feel like that could go so south it wouldn't be like i mean i get it like they're blind like they need to like, touch things but like I could just see something get, getting like knocked over really easily um, and breaking. So I kind of question the translation of like what he told me, but that was the concept of this exhibit. So I got up there and because I'm one person, obviously I'm not going to walk around blindfolded. Um, so it was kind of pointless for me to wait that half hour. So if you're here and you're traveling solo, save yourself time. Don't wait in line for the exhibit about touch it's not gonna be like that fun for you. So now you know. Okay, so I ended up making a pit stop at Five Guys because I, other than those like soup waffles haven't eaten all day, I kind of thought that was gonna be enough food since I didn't want to eat a ton before going to my friend's restaurant because I know there's gonna be a ton of food there. That museum really made me hungry. Uh, five guys, you can't say no. Um, I was gonna take it, like, eat it and walk, but then I got in there and remembered A, how messy the seasoned fries are, and B, sorry, I don't wanna get hit, um, that they have malt vinegar, which I feel like is kind of a necessity, and you can't walk around with malt vinegar, like, in your fry bag, it's gonna be a disaster. So, now I'm like really running on the schedule and I'm pretty sure we're not gonna make it inside the house, but at the very least, theoretically we'll see the outside of it. So it kind of counts.
Okay, so behind me, that green mic, um, Cream Building is Charles de Gaulle's uh, former childhood home. He was born here in Lille. Um, they do have a museum. Uh, fun fact, if you get here at the last minute like I did, it's free basically for the last hour. They call it happy hour because it's kind of rushed. Otherwise, you do have to pay, I think it was like eight euros or something to go in. It's very small. Honestly, I'm kind of happy I got here when I did. didn't have to pay because I don't know if I pay to go in there, but it's somebody definitely just did something. Um, it's definitely worth going in if you can go in for free. Um, they do have audio headsets because I only have like a half hour to go through it. They told me I couldn't have one, which was fine. Um, they did give me like a little map, but as you can see, like, because I'll probably have the video either before or after this, obviously, um, as you will see or have seen, um, it's not like a super large house by any means. Um, I think if you were to be in there with a lot of people, it wouldn't really be that appealing. I'm, that's why I'm kind of glad I went at the last second because there weren't too many people. And then by the time I did catch up to like the last kind of like group of people that paid to go in, it got kind of like, there were just too many people in like the little rooms. So go at the last second. I mean, I was in and out in like 20 minutes. Like if you really want to look at stuff, you can maybe plan like 45 minutes, but you don't need a ton of time to get it done, which is kind of amazing. So add seeing Charles de Gaulle's house to your list while you're in the old. Also note, while you're watching the little uh, video montage of Charles de Gaulle's house, they do have some of the vintage napkins from Mertz. Um, Mertz, the um, like Stroopawful place that I went and tried today. So, fun fact, like my friend was right, that was his favorite place. And they even have some of the vintage napkins to prove it. So obviously, while you're here, Mertz, Mertz has to be on your uh, to taste list. So obviously one of my favorite things to do when I'm traveling is try food um, that's local to the town, the city, or country. So today, because we're in Lille, we're going to be trying a, ooh, I'm gonna butcher this, a Marlo de Fred. Um, basically, it's like A U X M E R R E I L L E U X de Fred. I'm pretty sure it's a Marlo. I could be totally butchering that, so fair warning. Um, but basically, they have very well-known cakes here in Lille that look like this. They're basically a base of meringue, and then in this case, white chocolate whipped cream, in this case, chocolate whipped cream, and then little bits of white chocolate or regular chocolate on top. These were created um, back in the day when the aristocracy would hold salons. They would hold these like basically chats about politics, arts, etc. And they would obviously need something to snack on. So they would snack on little pastries like this. And today, this is one of the most famous pastry shops in Lille. My friend Erin told me that Lille likes to take credit for creating these pastries, though she said some people from Belgium will argue with you that they did it first. It's kind of like the case of maybe French fries where People assume it was France, but really French fries originated in Belgium. But again, she said in Lille, they believe they created it. So if you're in Lille, just go with it. Um, so let's see how they taste. Okay. It's a lot softer than I thought it was gonna be. Let's see, I don't wanna make a mess. Okay. Okay, so the white chocolate, oh my gosh, is very sugary. It's really nice, but frankly, for me, like I'm not someone who loves white chocolate, especially when it's like overly sweet. So I don't know that this would be my personal favorite, but let's compare it with the chocolate and then we'll make our decision. Hmm, okay, there's like, it's like almost like caramel or something in there. Okay. 
Ja, okay. So based on the two of these, I would definitely go for the chocolate. If you're in Lille and you don't want something too sweet, go for their chocolate, um, like little meringue. My friend Erin was telling me that the chocolate's actually the one that they're most well known for, but her favorite's the vanilla, which is why I gave that a shot as well. Um, so yeah, here's the label one more time. Um, oh, Marvago, it's with Fred. You can find them in Old Town Lille. One of the first things you're gonna notice when you're walking around Old Town is like this little corner shop that normally has a giant line. They also have a really magnificent chandelier because it's such a small shop, the chandelier really stands out. That's the place you wanna go get these. They're really like, they're solid. And you can't get them everywhere in France. My friend Erin was telling me that all of her friends in Paris, every time she comes to visit them, they will specially request that she brings these because they are, you know, pretty much a delicacy to this part of France, in particular Lille. So there you have it. I'm gonna go ahead and finish my tea, probably finish the chocolate one of these, and then I have to get ready for dinner. Um, which maybe it was poor planning on my part to have dessert before dinner, but I mean, at this point, I'm an adult, I can do what I want, so. We're gonna go with it. Okay, so it's my last night here at Lille and I met my friend Erin for dinner. She's an expat who lives here, but not for too much longer because she's moving to Paris. Um, <laughs> We met on Devour's food tour in Florence and became good friends with some yes. brothers. And now we're here at the pub store in Lille. My final night having a massive ice cream sundae. Okay, this is like so big. <laughs> Bigger than both of our heads, I think. <laughs> do you want to talk us through what they did? Um, I do. So inside our chocolate truffles, because there's a lot of chocolate in this area, there is chantilly, which is just whipped cream, but French butter, uh, creme anglaise, vanilla ice cream, French vanilla ice cream, which is the best, on uh, the chocolate, some bright leaves, I think I can see that one. I think so too. Really good. 